Home, you're in for a good one. This one went to overtime in the regular season meeting. UTSA won that matchup 98-79 in the most high-scoring affair in Conference USA play this season. UTSA with the opening tip and the opening bucket as Jacob Germany one-handed slam. Right on cue, the junior center from Kingston, Oklahoma, not far from where we're sitting now in Frisco. Nine games in double figures this year, excuse me, double doubles this year. Three in his last six contests. Southern Miss, like you said, a little banged up. Isaiah Moore not in the starting lineup. He was who Coach Jay Ladner said they needed to step up in a long week like this. Didn't even dress out for tonight's matchup with the Roadrunners. There's some scoring from Denage Harris. We highlighted him a couple moments ago in the Columbus, Mississippi native. Knots it right back up at two. As somebody who thankfully has been able to stay healthy for the most part this year, had a lot of knee trouble in his early years at Southern Miss. Now he's down low against Jacob Germany. Germany with back-to-back -back buckets to open the scoring. So we take a look at the Southern Miss starting five. Isaiah Moore not alone in starters unavailable for the Golden Eagles. Mo Arnold, Tyler Stevenson, Jason Pierre Jr., Tay Hardy, all have missed significant time throughout the year. Now, Tyler Stevenson and Pierre Jr. thought to be back in the rotation as we get underway in the Conference USA Championships. UTSA. Coming off a big win, three conference wins this season, one of those coming against this Southern Miss ball club. A three-point try left short. And now the Golden Eagles will set up with Rashad Bolden. Waylon Knapper, Rashad Bolden, DeAndre Pinckney, most recently in the starting lineup. There's Jeffrey Armstrong, who's come on strong as of late, but he was unable to knock down that triple. And he's usually coming off the bench, needed in the starting lineup tonight, had himself wide open just off the of mark. That one kicked into the corner. Adu Ankra for the first time from downtown. Off the back iron and out. So the leading scorer out of the starting lineup for Southern Miss in this matchup has been Waylon Knapper, the sophomore out of Columbia, South Carolina, who put up a career high just three games ago. You would think he could play a factor in this one as Bolden knocks down the first three-pointer of the night. Look all the way back to November 24th, 29 points his season high. That time for the most in a single game by USM freshman in Golden Eagle history. Aggressive scorer who excels in shooting the mid-range. There's third-year head coach Jay Ladner. Had a chance to sit down with him yesterday. Had a fantastic conversation. Has been stuck on that 99 win number for quite some time as Southern Miss has lost 14 straight games coming into the tournament. Really, he does have some confidence with the reset button that his team's able to push this week. And he has a nicer wardrobe than most <laughs> coaches do. Everybody else is dressed down these days. Coach Ladner still looking good in the suit. Absolutely rocking it, much like coaches did more often back in the day. Really been that last couple COVID years that have seen a change in the dress. No change in the result from Adu Ankra. Knocks down the triple on his second attempt. He had a career high 22 against Southern Miss in their original meeting this season. The broadcaster still in suits every game. Absolutely. <laughs> Won't see Chris Mikoski in a polo. No chance as that one's off of the hands of Zumbel and out of bounds. Steve Henson in his second year with the UTSA Roadrunner. Excuse me, six year with the Roadrunners. And in his five seasons, you've already seen a Conference USA Coach of the Year, has had an exciting winning brand of basketball that he's established down in San Antonio. He's had a rough sledding this season, but really you've seen kind of the foundation laid for the future in Central Texas. Learned so much under Lon Kruger. Five seasons with him at Oklahoma, seven at UNLV. He also had some time in the Atlanta Hawks organization. The amount of basketball knowledge this man has that he's passing along to his players is phenomenal. Raylan Napper knocking down a three. Adu Ankara wants to answer again. That one goes in and out, but Germany has the offensive carom. In Hattiesburg, it was the first time that UTSA won at Southern Miss 
in that matchup's history. Tied the series at eight. UTSA opened that overtime on a 12-0 run. Outscored the Golden Eagles 22-3 in the extra period. Really was a phenomenal overtime period that Coach Jay Ladner said, I'd like to forget how that one <laughs> ended and try and rectify that here in Frisco. UTSA with three conference wins compared to just the one. But Jacob Germany has been doing that all year long. He has eight early points, had just 13 in the win over Rice at the Tudor Fieldhouse this past Saturday, but he is off and running here in the opening round. Well, we talked about the lack of Isaiah Moore tonight, the lack of size down low. UTSA is going to keep using that to their advantage. One kept in bounds by Isaiah Adu Ankra, the sophomore out of Houston. Zumble on the drive, and he's fouled on the floor. But Jacob Germany, just a junior, 15th all-time in rebounding in program history, and he is quickly climbing up that list. Talking to Coach Henson yesterday, and he said one of his biggest keys for this one was going to be get Germany more touches. So far, so good, Kyle. Fifth in the conference in field goal percentage. He's 12th in points per game. I have to think he could be in for a big night. That one taken away by Pierre Jr. His first minutes back from injury since the Marshall game on February 21st, but he's unable to finish with the lay-in try on the offensive end following the turnover. Long three-point try for Dil Ding off the back iron. Germany somehow comes up with the board, and he's think the mismatch will be there throughout the majority of this one. He connects on the second. Here's Isaiah Moore. Expected to be a huge part of the game plan, and unfortunately for Coach Ladner, not available, much like a number of starters for this Southern Miss squad. Well, as you mentioned, we had a great conversation with Coach Ladner yesterday, and at the time, he was still confident, or at least holding his cards close to his chest. He, he knows he can trust the two of us, but decided <laughs> it wasn't time quite yet to let us know severity of what Moore had going on and that he wouldn't be able to return tonight. Previously head coach at Southeastern Louisiana. Led the Lions to the Southland Conference Championship in 2018. And he returned back to Hattiesburg, where he was a part of the 1987 NIT championship team. Germany stuck on the elbow, takes the mismatch, turnaround jumper with the left hand, and he gets it to fall from the free throw line. It's not just knocking it down from two feet away on the low blocks. Germany has some range, showing it off. Off to a blazing start in this one. Not even seven minutes in, he's already got 11 points. Long three-point try off the mark. Southern Miss has gone cold from the field. Three-minute drought at the moment. Dill Ding wanted to pass down low. Went up in what looked like a shot, and Jacob Germany with a bit of miscommunication. The Germany getting it done from top of the, right outside the free throw line. Nice little move there inside, in the paint, left hand. It's pretty and it's nearly unstoppable when you don't have the size to match up. One of the hardest shots in the sport to stop, the sh hook shot, especially from that far away. If you're able to have that kind of touch and accuracy, you're going to have a lot of points. And right now he's got 11 of them. Well, Germany has a three-inch advantage on the tallest man on the floor right now. And again, UTSA will just continue to exploit that all night long, but occasionally they'll let Mr. Zumble fire one up. Zumble, who had 22 points, a career high against Rice in his last downing, wanted to heat check early on. A quick miss from Southern Miss. Ding down low again, miscommunication. Second time in the last three possessions that the Roadrunners have had an errant pass from Ding trying to find Germany in the low block. That's the only thing that's stopping Germany right now. His teammates not able to connect with him. And fifth turnover so far, UTSA should feel fortunate to be up by six, given how badly they're losing the turnover battle early. Shooting just 23% at the moment, three of 13. Germany pokes it away. Race to the loose basketball. Germany wins that one. Turn around in the lane, rattles around, and it's off the mark. UTSA keeps it alive, and Ding's three-pointer is also off the mark. How fitting 
that after five makes, a, finally a miss from Germany, but it hit every part <laughs> of the rim and just simply would not fall. Even on the ones he misses, he doesn't miss by much. Another miss sticking around in this ball game. Despite that drought, you saw it right there. They've only made one of their last nine attempts from the field. McNeil directing traffic back to Zumble. And quickly, they get it back to Germany. They're going to let him work. Down low one-on-one -on, -one on Tyler Stevenson and points already. It's the 26th time in 32 games that Germany has reached double figures. And he'll take a breather as his roadrunners only up by six. Even with some of the dominance in the stats at the moment, you really feel like Southern Miss is hanging around and lurking, but their shooting continues to be ice cold. They have not scored in the last five minutes of gameplay. Southern Miss just one of their last 11. They've missed their most recent eight from the field. Boppinger down low to Phoenix. Ford had it taken away. Southern Miss with numbers. Bolden pestered in the low block, and he can't get anything to drop. UTSA defense did a really good job getting back and closing in. You mentioned the numbers, but UTSA took that advantage away quickly. Zumble on the drive, he's fouled off the glass and good. His first bucket, the junior out of Italy, keeping that tradition alive of having an Italian point guard who does a lot of work for the Roadrunners. Coach Henson telling me yesterday that Zumble has been getting more aggressive in his approach in this last stretch in the season has really been his most consistent time in the lineup over the last three years. Only averages four and a half points per game for Coach Henson's ball club. However, as he takes a breather, he's got three early points in this one. Taking over for Giovanni De Nicolau, who was with this UTSA ball club for four seasons. And since then, Dumble's really come in and found his rhythm as a scorer down the stretch in Conference USA play. Najee Harris trying to find somebody in the corner. He finds Napper from downtown, who gets it to drop his second triple early on. It's become his show of late. He's had some of his best games over the past couple of weeks. Junior college, first team All-American in 2021, making the transfer from Dodge City Community College. Played his first season at the College of Central Florida, and now making his way to Hattiesburg and finding a rhythm off the bench early, but he's had 12 starts now, this, this being his 13th on the campaign long two-pointer no good and there's a foul over the back called on the road runners you like the way that napper is able to catch and shoot off of the pass from harris no and he's really come on strong recently the last meeting between these two teams the golden eagles and the road runners he scored 21 points that's his career high he also had a team leading six assists southern miss with any chance of success tonight will need him to have a similar performance grew up in columbia south carolina actually played a lot of prep basketball with isaiah moore who now we've mentioned unavailable tonight for the Golden Eagles. That tandem has really been the scoring threat for Southern Miss down the stretch. How about this one from way downtown? There's the confidence level from Napper. His Golden Eagles get it right back. Bolden takes a try at it. No good. And another offensive board. Stevenson battling down low. The foul, excuse me, they call the jump ball on that. No contact needed. Stevenson's presence could make a great deal of difference for Southern Miss tonight. He's not at 100%, wants to go, wants to help his team have an opportunity to advance. There he goes off of the inbound. A little too high, trying to find a rhythm, like you mentioned. Hasn't played in nearly a month since an injury sustained against Marshall. Trying to fight through injury for a team that needs depth. They're going to make a run in the Conference USA Championships. Napper takes that one away. Now he takes it himself up against two road runners in the lane, and he gets it to kiss off the glass. That aggressive nature, just have to keep attacking. It's going to end up not going well for you sometimes, but Southern Miss 
no choice but to just go all out and hope that it falls. Into the corner for McNeil, goes right back over to Boffinger in the lane. His floater drops. Turnover is a real bugaboo for UTSA early on, but they're shooting much more efficiently from the field than Southern Miss at the moment. Eight of 16, a perfect 50%. Closing in on eight to play. Nap Napper with the step back three and a heat check from beyond the arc. Christian Tucker drives in the lane. Offensive foul called. Harris as well, and that's a big question. Can Harris attack this UTA, UTSA defense effectively? We'll need to see that going forward. So much athleticism and even Coach Ladner talking about the fight in his ball club. He's not disappointed in the effort. He's disappointed in the results throughout the season. Not going to make excuses for his ball club, but he certainly thinks that they are going to fight until the end, and they have shown that on occasion throughout the year. Nice feed from Harris, but an even better defensive rotation from the Roadrunners. Pinckney had a wide open look and looked as if he was headed straight for the flush. Now Zumble drives, and he's fouled by Waylon Knapper. Napper plus nine at the moment. Best number out of anybody on that UTSA side. Jacob Germany, by the way, has not scored since that first media timeout. Had 11 points in the first eight minutes of gameplay, and they get it right to him on the inbound. Want to get him going again. Almost turned it over. Instead, turn around, fade away, no good. Made his first five tries, misses last two. Pierre Jr. Also his first action since that Marshall matchup. First team honoree. Last season, uh, excuse me, all freshman team honoree. That one given away. Dill Ding on the loft. The slam is missed by Boffinger. He had the elevation. They had the play drawn up, but the execution just wasn't there. You see the smile on Boffinger's face, even though it didn't go down. Knew it could have been incredibly special. His team's still up by six, though. Great. Hustle from that Southern Miss side to get back in time. Napper puts it on the floor and he takes it himself. Just a four point ball game. UTSA almost doubling up Southern Miss in terms of field goal percentage. Roadrunners near 50% as Boffinger puts that one in from point blank range. Couldn't get the flush, could get the bunny to go <laughs> there though. And somebody who Hasn't done much offensively in the last couple of months. Last time he went into double figures was back in early February. At six points in, against Rice on Saturday. Still in that starting lineup for UTSA. Plays valuable minutes for Coach Henson. Another long three. Try from Napper, and that one drilled. 13 early points for Waylon Napper. Somebody who averages just over seven points per game. We're talking about where does that missing offense come from? Napper says, it's coming from me. <laughs> At 15 against Rice, 29 just three games ago against the Owls in their previous matchup. Germany has that one blocked by Pinckney. Here come the Golden Eagles. Big possession for UTSA defensively. Najee Harris, Napper, guarded now by Ding, and they go on the low block again. Cross-court pass, three-point try from Pierre Jr. He nails it, and we're tied up at 21. We're closest to the Southern Miss bench, and it is alive right now. After going 1-17 and 17 in conference play, they are lending it all loose, playing with house money. Nothing to lose for Coach Ladner's ball club. They said it yesterday in our meeting. They feel like this is a reset opportunity. They've already pushed that button today. Foul called. 
DeAndre Pinckney is the guilty party. Germany will shoot free throws, but Waylon Knapper's been shooting from downtown. Knapper now nine times scoring in double figures this season, counting today. Five of eight from the field. That includes three of five from beyond the three-point line. UTSA led by as much as nine here in this first half. Knapper being attended to on that right wrist. Keep an eye on that as we move into the latter parts of this first half. Germany connects on the front free throw. One more to come. Providing the majority of the offense tonight so far for the Golden Eagles. Former first team Juco All-American has won on big stages at that level. Now trying to do it here at the start. Germany perfect from the line. Gives his Roadrunners a two-point advantage. He has 13 to match Waylon Knapper. You have to think that battle is just getting started, Chris, as we head into the final four minutes of this first half. Knapper driving three different Roadrunners around, and it's taken away by UTSA. Germany on the drive. Didage. Game in Hattiesburg a lot, but also back in San Antonio. What a tight game they played. Both teams winning on the road. They get a third match up here to neutral court. Both teams splitting the season series. They've split the all-time series as well. This is the 17th matchup between the Roadrunners and Golden Eagles. The Battle of the Birds tied up 8-8 through the first 16. And much like Chris just mentioned, it's been very little separating these two, even in the 2022 campaign. Whoever wins tonight may hold that series lead for a long time to come as realignment rears its ugly head. These two teams may not see each other again for a while. Great point. Both in that Western division, both anticipated to be in Conference USA moving into next season. But like you said, that ever-changing landscape of collegiate athletics, you never know what's going to be the last game between the two. Offensive board in favor of Harris, but he's unable to finish on the putback. Under three to play in the first half. Sumble back to Germany, who has 15 points in the first 18 minutes of gameplay. Bill Dean still looking for his first make, left that one short on the three point try. Straight on line, just a little bit short of the hoop, but good look. Bolden finds Harris. Harris berated by Germany. Still had a good look at the hoop. Second chance. Pierre Jr. spinning in the lane and scoring as well. Pierre Jr., an all freshman selection in Conference USA. First time USM has had a player on that squad since 2011. They love the fact that he is going to be in Hattiesburg for quite some time. Jacob Germany reeled in the high pass, gathers his own miss, and puts it back up and in. 17 first half points for Mr. Germany. And six boards as well. Well on his way to racking up a double-double this evening and really carrying the Roadrunners to this point. Would be his 10th double-double of the season and his fourth in the last seven games. 90 to play in the first. Knapper sizing up the Roadrunners defense, elects to drive into the corner. Pierre Jr. again from three. No good. And the board in favor of Phoenix four. Playing of, of, of collegiate basketball just a couple of seasons ago in their final four run. Well, she came the national stardom right here in the Metroplex. It was when the Ramblers played a regional in Dallas, and I was lucky enough to be part of that event and got to just hang out a little bit and see some of the greatness. <laughs> it's funny, one of my favorite stories surrounding collegiate basketball has to do with Loyola Chicago, and it's my favorite because it was my most disappointing story. I did a tournament in the Cayman Islands a couple years ago, great tournament. Loyola Chicago was there. Saint, or Sister Jean was not. I was so excited to get to meet her. <laughs> you thought she'd get to be to in the, the presence of a legend. Team, huh? I thought she would take that opportunity, and ultimately she didn't show up.
you know she'll be there for oh, yeah. March Madness coming. A yeah, road trip weeks. is rare, but wherever <laughs> you see the Ramblers in the bracket, she's going to be along for the ride. Pass into the paint, batted around, and somehow Tyler Stevenson, one-handed, got that one to kiss off the glass. Just a one-bucket ball game in the final half minute of action in the first half of our opening round game in Conference USA championship play. Shot clock is off. Sumble setting up for the final possession. UTSA very good in the closing seconds of a period. Aduankra from way downtown, and he drills it. Second three-pointer of the half. Halftime he from... Puts up a very stingy defense that'll run with you all night long. So that takes a lot of perseverance and effort as well. Watch out for number 24 in the white. Jacob Germany had 11 points in the first eight minutes of the opening half. If he were to do that again, he'd have a new career high to his total. First round action from Frisco, Texas in Fort Center at the Star. 2022 Heritage Landscapes Supply Group Conference USA Men's Championships. So delighted you've elected to spend your evening with us. Tuesday evening of basketball. Zumble down low. Germany behind the back did everything he could to keep that ball in bounds. Now it's Bolden on the drive. Sees that one knocked away. There's a roadrunner stuck in the backcourt. Not so much for Germany, who gets tripped up on. They're going to call a blocking foul on Jeffrey Armstrong underneath as the spill taken by Germany. Well, twice tonight, we've seen plays that almost resulted in poster dunks for UTSA, unable to do it. But then again, Southern Miss just having to get creative to keep the ball away from Germany in some cases. He's had quite a bit of time on the floor, 17 of the first 20 minutes. Quick pass down low to Boffinger. He kisses it off the glass and good. Six points for Latchland Boffinger. Boffinger back in the starting lineup starting in mid-February. Was solid throughout. Really good rebounding from Boffinger down the stretch. Roadrunners led by as much as nine in that opening half. Southern Miss actually roared back to take a slim lead. And there's a turnaround make for Pinkney in the paint. His first one to go tonight. 17 points against Charlotte. That was a late comeback that fell short against the 49ers. 70 to 67 was the score. Southern Miss did everything they could to stay within striking distance in that one. And Napper takes it away. And there you see some more tickets being punched to the NCAA tournament in a couple of weeks. Northern Kentucky on their way to dancing. Wright State, I believe. Oh, excuse me, I, I read Wright it backwards. Wright State heading to the dance. All those tickets being punched this week. Selection Sunday. Ooh, it's right around the corner. Congrats to Wright State. My apologies to Northern Kentucky. We've had some heartbreakers okay. over the past couple of days, too. And you mentioned that we all love the first round, second round, those early games at the NCAA tournament. But this week, you've got so many times where that championship game, you know only one of them is getting in. You know the other has no shot at an at-large. Those moments are so special. Both free throws good for Pinckney. Makes it a 30. Tumble back over to McNeil. Germany on the baseline. Boffinger on the drive. Could not get his floater to go. Now Atlin's pinballing around in the low block. And touches, and that's something that Henson mentioned to us yesterday. We're going to keep putting the ball in his hands, like right here. Sometimes it's distribute, but a lot of times he's going to be able to create for himself. And have to do that here, going up against Pinckney. And he picked up the pivot foot. An unfortunate break for Germany. He missed the shot regardless. And Southern Miss just trailing by a single possession. Get the ball back with Napper bringing it past the half-court logo. 
We're not seeing it as much tonight, but typically UTSA runs quite a bit. You look at the pace of play records in college basketball, UTSA has been in the top 40 each of the past four years. Trading travels back and forth, and you'd have to think the fact that this is a slower, more methodical game benefits Southern Miss. They sure. don't have that same sort of scoring ability. Keeping pace might be a tougher task for the Golden Eagles. And right now, because it's kind of slowed down, UTSA reluctant to really pedal to the metal here in this second half. It makes things interesting whenever things like that happen and a turnover goes back to the Golden Eagles. Pinkney on the low block somehow kept it alive. That was a missed opportunity with Pinkney, with Germany stuck on the other end of the floor. You get it to your big man when you don't have that kind of adversity facing you, but obviously still able to get it done from beyond the arc that trip down the floor. Pinkney with sneaky good range. Six foot eight, but it doesn't mean he cannot knock down the triple. 7 0 run for Southern Miss. UTSA has not scored in the last two and a half minutes and counting. All knotted up again at 32. Looked like UTSA was growing their lead, was growing the momentum. Turnaround from Boffinger drops. So far, I'm not seeing it. Pinkney still seems to be draped all over Germany as much as possible. But given the fact he already has three fouls, I wonder if he'll continue playing so close or if he's going to give Germany a thing or two just so he can remain in the game longer. Pinkney got a step on his man, but could not finish at point-blank range. UTSA running Germany. On the whiteboard, after the loss to Charlotte in the regular season finale, it was simple. Zero and zero. Reset, come into March. You have to win five games in five days, but nothing else in the regular season matters. Down almost five starters throughout at some point in the latter half of conference play, yet it's still a fresh slate. And right now we are still in a fresh slate, all knotted up at 34 piece. You look back at what they did to begin the season as that's ripped away. Four and two to start the year. They won three in a row. There was a lot of people thinking the Golden Eagles are back and then fell on a lot of hard times. At eight wins last season, four in conference play and with this bucket, from Napper again, giving it to Stevenson. And even a little contact, didn't get a whistle, but it was enough to tie things back up at 34. Free throw here would give Southern Miss their first lead, and it does since the 16.04 mark in the first half. So almost a full 21 minutes of game action. Gotta love the addition of Pierre Jr., Tyler Stevenson, a combined 11 points from them at the moment, and just having them in the rotation is enough to give a sliver of hope to this Golden Eagles ball club with the talent that they have, even if they're not 100%. We had no doubt, Pierre Jr. especially, considering that he hadn't played since February 21st. As soon as his teammates saw he was going to be available, they had to get a little extra pep in their step. Jacob Germany, though, down low, if he keeps doing that, they keep finding ways to get him touches down on the blocks. In this case, he picks up the offensive rebound, gets the putback, and lets out a primal score. Eight of 13 at the moment. He's three of four from the free throw line. Germany at 19 points, a chance for 20. And again, his career high, just 26. He's nearing that mark quickly as he drills the free throw. One of the best big men in the conference, six foot 11, 235 pounds for Coach Henson, putting on a show and putting his Roadrunners back up by one. First round action. Winner takes on Florida Atlantic. That one shifted into the corner. Napper from downtown. Rebound in favor of Phoenix Four. That one put on the floor. Diving for the loose basketball was Napper. Batted around. And it ends up with Dill Ding. Ding into the corner for Andu Ankra. And he drills it for his third triple. 
Last time these teams got together, Adu Ankara scored a career high 21 points. Also a career high seven three pointers, three of them coming in overtime. A brilliant move. March is almost like as, as if you refresh your phone for new tweets or new Facebook posts or whatever. You, re you refresh it, and all of a sudden, you've got more tickets being punched to the big dance. Also love seeing the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State, future member of Conference USA, moving into the NCAA tournament. Now looking forward to some solid basketball programs joining this league in future years. The Gamecocks, the New Mexico State Aggies, how great they've been in the whack for so long. Sam Houston State, they've won a ton of Southland Conference championships and are now playing very well in the WAC. So Conference USA basketball will be strong in this new alignment. Going to have a lot of fun with those teams coming into the fray. Neither one of these teams in the plans at the moment to be in Conference USA, but replaced by very quality basketball programs like Jacksonville State, Sam Houston, Liberty even being in that group as well. Remains to be seen exactly how long both of these schools will remain in CUSA. So you'll see it. If you're a UTSA or a Southern Miss fan, you'll be keeping up with the news. But regardless of what the alignment is, again, really, really good basketball coming in this direction. Stevenson playing some good basketball here in the second half. He's got six points, a chance for two more. Fouled on his way to the bucket. Fourth foul already on Ford. So expect him to take some time off, still with plenty of time left here in the second period. Foul trouble maybe getting into the mix. Pinckney with four fouls for Southern Miss. So each team with a big man, with a couple hacks to his total as Germany checks back in. Stevenson, a 68% free throw shooter, missed the first one. Preseason all-conference selection, and he drills the second. And as it's been the case all night long, UTSA, given the current matchups, should be able to go down to Germany, the closest man height-wise, five inches shorter than the UTSA center. Lankra, back to Dil Ding. Works to the middle of the floor on the drive and foul called as Boffinger was hacked. You mentioned the height difference, and this is a credit to Southern Miss, who early on, it was a visible mismatch. 11 points in the first eight minutes for Jacob Germany, and since then, they have had a rotation of players, one of which in foul trouble, and that's DeAndre Pinckney, that have found a way to at least stifle the scoring ability of Germany throughout this second half because it hasn't been easy all night long. No, and, and Germany, again, so versatile. And this is the trouble when you have to put people on the bench like this, probably the best matchups and more somebody who we fully expected to offer a challenge to him tonight, the 6'10" forward from Southern Miss, but we found out just before tip he would not be able to dress, and that's a huge blow to USA. He had six blocks against UTSA. That's the most for Southern Miss since 2009 in a single game. Had a phenomenal matchup with the Roadrunners earlier this season. He is unavailable, did not dress out, though he was anticipated to dress out. There's Dill Ding from downtown. Back iron, no good. Stevenson reels in the two-handed board, and he's fouled in the process by Boffinger. First foul on Boffinger. UTSA, the only foul trouble they have is Phoenix Four. Four personals on him. Nobody else outside of Ford and Pinkney have more than two fouls to their total at the moment on either side. Down low to Stevenson, worked around to Napper. He's been quiet here in this second half, but he takes that one strong, straight to the cup. A little hitch in his giddy up coming back as Napper landed awkwardly. See if he has any trouble running back down the floor now, still looking at that ankle. 
Back within two as he cuts the deficit in half with that bucket. There's the points in the paint battle. That was much dominated by UTSA earlier. Since then, the Golden Eagles have closed the gap underneath. Boffinger wide open after the hustle play from Adu Akra on the baseline. Southern Miss defenders converging on the basketball and leaving Boffinger all alone under the hoop. Rebounding in favor of UTSA, 31 to 20. Taken away, Poffinger can't finish on the lay-in. He had the steal to book in what was a great hustle play from the runners on their last offensive possession, but couldn't get it to fall. What a tough miss to not have the touch there, only up by four points. UTSA needs to get things, things stretched out as we head towards the final 10 minutes. Wide player for the Houston Cougars. Wow. The women's program. <laughs> That's after, unbelievable. After that year, threw out about 200 emails with a highlight reel on it, begging for an opportunity to walk on to a team connected with the Roadrunner coaches. And they said, come on over. You know, 6'6 six, six guard, we'll give you a chance. And he really found his place only due to some injuries and COVID issues, forced him into the starting lineup, and now he is a really key contributor to this team. Coach Steve Henson said he doesn't know about the scholarship situation quite yet, but if they award one to him, that will be a fantastic. That should be something that goes viral. Oh, it should be. Credit to Adu Ankara for his persistence to find his way onto a roster, but also credit to Coach Henson for seeing the talent and giving an opportunity to a player who, at least tonight, has nine points. And the earlier Southern Miss matchup, he had 22, and certainly has a lethal ability from beyond the arc. Over 40% from downtown he is a sure thing for the Roadrunners. Nothing sure in this one. How about Germany lining up from downtown? Why not? He's got 20 already. Board goes to the Golden Eagles. First time he's thrown one up from distance. We mentioned he's versatile, but at least that time unable to do it from long range. The air gives a shot at it. And a foul on the floor. Got some updates from over at Court A as the Marshall Thundering Herd take down the sixth seed at FIU. They'll move on to take on the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, the three seed out of the West. 6 p.m. tip-off Central Time, 7 Eastern on ESPN Plus. Court B action tomorrow. That's a Marshall Thundering Herd team that's made some noise in Frisco previously. They're very comfortable in this building. They've also made some postseason noise in the NCAA tournament under Coach D'Antoni and company. And we'll need to work on this during our pregame drills, Kyle. Okay. Obina and Achille Killen, the leader. Got it. For Marshall. 15 points. I'm not going to say it right now, but I'm going I'm to tell you. But he had a double-double. That's a good name. A really good name. Awesome. Man. I have a feeling we're going to be saying it quite a few times tomorrow. 15 points, 12 rebounds in the win over the Panthers. Southern Miss takes the lead again into the corner. There's Adu Ankara again. His fourth three-pointer of the night. And back and forth, the lead changes keep on coming. Eight in this ball game and counting. We've had a couple of tight ones here on court B. In our first game, the Florida Atlantic women led most of the way. Florida International had to make a comeback in that fourth quarter. But in this one, back and forth, back and forth. And tied back up after that Harris bucket. Only the second time he has scored in this ball game. Hard-nosed player, loves that invitation to contact. And he had the defense on that miss from Boffinger. Closing in on eight minutes to play. Nothing decided on court B. In the women's game, the UTSA women advancing over UTEP in overtime. That one kicked into the corner for Jeffrey Armstrong. In and out it goes. Roadrunners aiming for a perfect day in Frisco. Their women's program moves on. Men trying to do the same. They're in a battle with Southern Miss at the moment. 
Another storyline that we need to harp on. Dill Ding, the junior, averaging over 14 points per game. Still scoreless, and he coughs that one up. Right on cue, Kyle, as soon as he's going to the hoop, finds himself in the lane, kicks it off his very, very colorful, bright shoes. A couple of bright shoes in that UTSA lineup. Him and Boffinger matching in the white uniforms. Been shopping together, it looks like. They have. You think you could sport shoes of, of that color? Could not pull them off. I don't think I could either. Waylon Napper on the drive, throws on the brakes and gets it into the corner, but no asked for a more even ball game. And it's interesting because we talked about contrasting styles at halftime. That has continued into the second half. Three-point play has evened out, but really it's the bench that's stepped up in favor for Southern Miss at multiple points throughout this ball game. Well, UTSA, really, it's three players who are doing all of the damage. Outside of those three, only six points for UTSA. What's amazing is that none of UTSA's points have come off the bench. A big part of that is because Dill Ding is 0 for 5. UTSA getting outscored bench-wise, 19 to nothing. Stevenson, one of those bench players for Southern Miss. So it's a bit of a misnomer. He's not really <laughs> a bench player. Just happened to come off there this evening. Yeah, preseason All-Conference USA. He has 11 points, 66 double-figure games. Make it 67 now with that flush off of a fantastic pass from Waylon Napper. And if you thought that that bucket was going to be by itself, Think again, because Jacob Germany now has 22 points, and the answers continue to go back and forth. Well, that's going to be the heavyweight fight over these final six minutes. Germany, Stevenson going back and forth. And right now, Stevenson calling for the basketball. Underneath, they get it to him, and he pays off with the floater in the lane. That round to young Mr. Stevenson. They're going to keep trading blows. Junior out of Columbus, Mississippi. Watch that battle. Stevenson, we were told he's not 100%, but he's gutting it out. He looks close to 100% in his first game back since February 21st. Jacob Germany along two to tie it back up. I could be wrong, but Stevenson does look a little winded to me. The more the minutes pile up, you might not be quite there conditioning-wise, but then again, you see the occasional quick zip pass. You see the way he finds his strength when he needs it going up against Germany. He is going to reach to the depths of his soul to get as many points as he can this evening. Southern Miss only has seven players deep at the moment. They have stretched the bench to the limit. The only player that's active that they have not gone to yet is Blake Roberts. He had an appearance last at North Texas. But they are very thin from an injury standpoint. No Mo Arnold, no Tyler Mormon, no Tay Hardy. And until today, they didn't have Tyler Stevenson or Jerron Pierre Jr. either. And the foul shot off the mark on the one and one. Southern Miss going just seven deep tonight. UTSA eight. But again, for those three bench players for UTSA, none of them have scored yet. Only Ding has even shot 0 for 5 from the field. Phoenix Ford limited to just 12 minutes as he's still sitting down with four fouls. You'd have to think whoever finds the stroke down the stretch here these five final five minutes, which star steps up? It's going to be who comes out on top in the first free throw good from Adu Ankra. Mentioned him early on. Doesn't shoot a ton of free throws. That was just his eighth attempt all season, but he's made seven of them. Second end of the one and one is true as well. 14 points for the sophomore from Houston. Part of the reason he was able to find his way on to a D1 team is he booked up quite a bit. Got to University of Houston as a freshman and was a really skinny guy. Good shooter, but there's no way he'd be able to body up against big time college athletes. Put some weight on, continued working on his stroke, and that's why he's making a difference to the Roadrunners. Wide open look for Pierre Jr. No good. Aduankra continues 
to make an impact, had the rebound there to go along with his 14 points. He has five boards and an assist in his 30 minutes of play. Zumble, free throw line to Germany off the back iron, and it settles home. Germany ties his career high at 26. Four-point lead for UTSA. Stevenson needing an answer, and they get it. Punch, counterpunch. <laughs> Stevenson, Germany. It feels like March. Chris Mykoski coming down the stretch. Neither team giving an inch. Locked it to Germany. Turnaround has it rejected by Stevenson. Now Waylon Napper with the lay-in on the other end on the fast break. He has 17. All due to the haymaker on the other end from Stevenson throwing down the block. Six foot eight against the six foot eleven Germany, and it turns into a bucket for Napper. Zumble from downtown, way off the mark, but there's a man there, Darius McNeil, to clean it up, and he's on the board for the first time tonight. His first two with great luck be exactly <laughs> in the right place to get a rebound that did not get iron. And a batted array from Stevenson. A new Ankara there. 320 on the clock. UTSA holding on to that one bucket lead. Zumble on the drive, left wide alone in the lane, and he cuts straight through the Golden Eagles. Zumble getting more aggressive. Southern Miss trailing by four. That is not a safe lead by any stretch of the imagination for UTSA. Winner moving on to face Florida Atlantic. Tyler Stevenson still doing what he can to will his Golden Eagles back in it. Good gracious, Tyler Stevenson against Germany. The pump fake going back up, drawing contact, and you see Germany punching himself in the head after taking that foul. Threw a bow right up to Stevenson, 68% from the line, and that one is good, 18 points. Now for Stevenson, his first game back from injury, and we are separated by one. TSA, we mentioned it, heading into the break. Five of their last seven. Southern Miss has made their last three. And five of their last six. Zumble to Germany, had it taken away by Napper. Last touched by the Golden Eagles. A look at the active hands from Napper. Napper getting in there, knocked away before Germany could get the ball high enough where it would be out of reach. Stevenson on the back end of that one as well. Long inbounds pass with just six to shoot. McNeil on the drive. Offensive foul. Napper draws the charge and gives it back. Bumper cars right there as McNeil driving to the hole with tremendous burst of speed. But wow, what a great job of holding ground. Takes a lot. To want to draw the contact like that, Napper not going to shy away from a little physicality, even at six foot, 185 pounds, into the corner, three point try, and it drops for Pierre Jr. The presence of Pierre, the presence of Stevenson, that's why Southern Miss thought they had a chance tonight. Coming in with only one win in conference, they find themselves with the lead with under two minutes to go. Bill Ding puts up a mid-range jumper. Germany gets it back and kisses that one off the glass. And one for the lead coming up. How are these men still standing? So many punches thrown between these two. Pierre, though, getting it done from long range. An exciting young man. It's not just about Stevenson and Germany down the stretch, but it sure feels like it at times, especially when Germany does that and again, pumping up his teammates after the two. 28 points for Germany, a chance to add to it. And he leaves it short. No surprise there. We're still knotted up at 62. 12 lead changes in the ball game. Chris Mykoski. Incredible. 
Shouldn't be shocked considering what these two teams did against each other last time they met going into overtime in Hattiesburg just as tight tonight. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Waylon Napper and one opportunity. This is unbelievable. Fifth straight game that Napper's been in double digits, really coming into form, driving baseline against Ding. Flexing. His free throw, a chance for 20 with the contact underneath. Phoenix Ford is fouled out. Pinkney on the floor with four fouls, and the free throw again left short. He'll have to wait another possession at least to get to his set three rebounds and a couple assists, but still not on the board from a scoring standpoint. Standing to the far side with Napper on. Brian from Zumble lays it in. We're tied back up. You have a feeling not only of March, but it's the art of desperation. One team will go home, the other one will move on to play Florida Atlantic tomorrow on court B. Both teams with frustrating seasons coming down to the wire, splitting the season series by hairs underneath. Stevenson on the feed from Napper. Created some space against Germany there with so many players converging out of the top of the key. Calm, cool, and collected. Coach Henson's bunch for UTSA. Zumble, far side, finds Dill Ding. Step back from the corner, let it fly. Germany with the board, he'll kiss it off the glass. No good, and it's Stevenson with the carom. Big free throw on the way from Stevenson. He missed this first, and he gets the second. 22 seconds and counting. Three-point ball game. Dumble on the drive. Wants to kick it back out. It's still Ding with a man all over him. Off the back iron. No good. Diving for the loose ball is still Ding. Dumble to inbound. Five ticks left. They give it to Dill Ding from way downtown to force overtime. It's short. The magic of 